Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to try to put together a super cheap gaming PC in 2022. As a lot of us already know, prices on new parts and used parts are absolutely ridiculous when it comes to the high end and even the mid-range market, which does make it really expensive to build a decent PC in the time we're in right now. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a relatively inexpensive build that you can actually do using used parts from eBay and Amazon. And once this build is finished up, it's going to cost me 218 US dollars. Now the price can go up by a little bit or down by a little bit. It really depends on how the market's fluctuating. And most of the time you can actually get out a bit cheaper because these office PCs are a dime a dozen, especially locally around me. But I did pick this one up on eBay. So this is an Optiplex 3050. I picked it up for $130 shipped to the door. And originally I had a little bit of a different plan. I was going to go with a GTX 750. It's only a one gigabyte variant, but for emulation, this should be a good card. Unfortunately, when I was purchasing everything, I didn't really think about the clearance on this card. I thought the heatsink would be a bit shorter, so we can't use the GT750, at least in this build, but I will have a video coming up. So instead, for this small form factor Optiplex 3050, I opted to use a GT1030. Not the most powerful card on the market, but uh, you know, if you try to buy the most powerful card on the market, you're going to spend a ton of money. I've seen these going anywhere from $65 up to $85, and this one here cost me $78 shipped from eBay, and it didn't come with a bracket. A little upset about that, but I'll make it work. So like I mentioned, the base of this build is a small form factor Optiplex 3050. Came with a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue Drive, and I'm still going to utilize this drive. Uh, I'll store my games on it. It's not going to be great for booting up your operating system, but it does work out great for Steam games and emulators. So I don't want to run my operating system from this mechanical drive due to boot times and load times. And originally I was going to go with the 2.5 inch SSD and I did pick one up pretty cheap. You can get them for around 18 to $20, but that was before I actually noticed that this unit here has an M.2 slot. So I went ahead and ordered a super cheap 128 gigabyte M.2 SSD on Amazon. And I know it's not a lot of room for storage, but I definitely wanted to keep the price as low as possible on this unit. Plus we have that 500 gigabyte mechanical drive to store our games on. So when it comes to the other specs of this unit, for the CPU, we have an i5-7500, and a lot of the times you're going to see these 3050s with the 6500, which should do just as well. We've also got 12 gigabytes of RAM, and it was listed with 8, but there's an 8 gig stick and a 4 gig stick. I'm not going to complain about it. It is DDR4, but it's only running at 2133 megahertz, and this unit does support up to 2400 megahertz. And when it comes to the bracket for that GT1030, the GTX 750's bracket actually fits right on here. They're both made by Zotac, and I was actually surprised to see this. So I did get kind of lucky with this, and I can put it right in no problem. And this is about the highest end card that I can get to fit in these Optiplex 3050's due to the single slot design and really no room for a larger heatsink. If you're not looking to build small form factor, you can pick up the mini tower, which is basically the same thing, but we do have a lot more room for a bigger GPU. Now one thing I would recommend doing when buying an older PC like this is replacing the thermal paste on the CPU. These are usually in an office and they're running non-stop. That thermal paste can dry up. I've run some tests on this without the GPU installed and the CPU temps look pretty decent so I'm going to kind of skip it here. But it is good practice to go ahead and replace that because it can get quite old. So I've got everything assembled, I just need to plug everything in and install Windows 10 to that SSD. Alright, so here we are. I've installed some games and some emulators that we're going to be taking a look at. We've got that i5-7500, 4 cores, no extra threads, and with the higher end emulators like RPCS3, this will struggle because we don't have those extra threads. But, you know, if you're building a cheaper PC like this, chances are this is going to be your only PC. And one thing I always like to take a look at is just overall performance. And so far, it's really snappy. For web browsing, email checking, document editing, you could even get some photo editing and video editing out of the way. I wouldn't do, you know, six streams of 4K on this, but it'll definitely handle 1080p video editing. And when it comes to 4K video playback from YouTube or your favorite app that supports 4K video playback, and real quick, here we have a YouTube video. This is just a little demo, 4K, 60fps, and the GT1030 can handle 4K video playback just fine. So you could definitely use this as your everyday desktop, but really when it comes down to it, we put this together in 2022 to see if we could get some gaming and emulation out of the way on it. And the first game I wanted to test was Genshin Impact. So I did try this at 1080p and at medium settings, we do get some dips. It actually runs at about 55 FPS. 
so I dropped it down to 900p medium settings. I still think it looks great and it plays fine. Now if you wanted to go up to high 1080p, you can set this at 30fps in the settings and you'll be good to go all day. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my game capture and we're going to test out some more PC games and then we'll move over to some emulation. Alright, so here's Forza Horizon 5, 720p, low, we're getting an average of 73 FPS with it set up like this. We can take some of these settings up to medium, but unfortunately, even at 900p low, it doesn't do 60, it's around 55, so you will have to go to very low settings, which in my opinion, just doesn't look good at all. Now, I personally love playing this game at 60 or over, but when it comes down to it, if you wanted to do this at 1080p with a medium-high mix, it's capable of 30fps. We can turn V-Sync to half here and get it to run like this all day long. It's really up to you. Still, one of my favorite games, this is Skyrim Special Edition, 1080p, medium, we're at 60. You can see it dip down to around 58 every once in a while, but I personally would probably never notice this if that frame counter wasn't on. At 900p, we can go up to high settings, and some people might have a 900p monitor laying around that would work perfectly with something like this. Now when it comes to GTA 5, I completely understand that this is an older game. I still really love playing it. And going into this, I actually wasn't expecting this kind of performance. We're at 1080p normal settings, and we got an average of 86 FPS with this one on that GT 1030 and that i5-7500. Not bad at all. And finally here, we have Doom Eternal, 720p low with dynamic resolution scale turn on. I've got it set to try to get the 60 FPS, but unfortunately, it's just not going to do it. And personally, I actually think this comes down to not having enough VRAM. This game here is really specific about VRAM. If I try to turn any of the settings up past low, it gives me a warning and will not let me apply it. So when it comes to PC gaming, it's really not that bad for the price, especially in the time we're in right now. A few years ago, this really wouldn't have been a good value, but with GPU prices, I mean, it's really not that bad. But where this thing really shines is emulation. Here we have PSP using the PPSSPP emulator, Vulkan back in, 6x resolution, and it's running great. Moving over to some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, here we have F-Zero on one of the harder levels or one of the harder tracks to emulate. We're at 1080p and unfortunately with this game on this specific level, 1440p still struggles a bit. But at 1080, it runs great. The other games that I went through and tested did run really well at 1440p, but you will have to drop it down with some as you can see here. PS2 is another one that actually performs really well on this chip paired with this GPU. We're using the DirectX 11 back in. I'm not using the new developer builds with Vulkan, but Shadow of the Colossus at 1080p with the DirectX 11 back in does run at full speed. And when it comes down to it, there are games that are easier to emulate. You can take them up to 1440. Here we have some 3DS using the Citra emulator, 4x resolution, and this uses the OpenGL backend if you have a card that's tough enough to handle it. Most of the Radeon APUs that I've tested can only go to 1 to 2x, but with this GT1030, we're able to pull this off at four times the resolution of the original 3DS. I also wanted to throw a little bit of original Xbox in here using CXBX Reloaded. We're at 720p and checking out that GPU usage, I probably could have taken it up just a bit more, but at 720p I still think it looks good and it plays fine on this machine. And I know I'm going to get some people asking about PS3 emulation. Unfortunately, with the i5-7500, we don't have any extra threads and our PCS3 really relies on those threads. And this system does struggle with even some of the easier to emulate PS3 games. So overall, it's really not a bad performer when it comes to emulation, and you can definitely get some PC games out of the way. It's not a top-of-the-line machine, but the way GPU prices are right now, it's really hard to build something cheap. 
If prices were normal, I'd pick up a GTX 1650 and a mini tower variant of this same PC, slap it in there, and have a great time with it. But if you're looking to build cheap, this is about as cheap as you can get right now unless you got a friend who's selling you some parts on a super discount. But in the end, it's really up to you. I mean, if you like the performance you saw with PC gaming and emulation on this machine, you can definitely build something very similar for the same price, or you can just wait it out until GPU prices come down. But, you know, we've been waiting for a little while now, and we really have no idea when that's going to happen. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're the kind of person that does see value in a PC like this, I will leave links in the description so you can go ahead and build one. And if you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this rig, just let me know what it is in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.